Hi everybody, this is me, Keith. How you doing? Good to see you. It's another month here in the old land of VTS. This is VTS number 18. If you're keeping track on a calendar, that's August of 2006. Although if you see this 20 years from now, one, I'll look a lot younger, and two, it will be a lot later. Anyhow, good to have you guys. I'm glad you came back. For those of you who joined up this month, a lot of folks joined up in August. Thanks so much for joining. It's good to have you guys. I hope you get a lot out of this. I hope you've enjoyed the back issues you've gotten so far. If you haven't gotten any back issues, pick some up. They'll help in explaining what we're doing. This month, we're going to continue what we've been doing with our scene with Murray. Uh, Murray's the fat little blue guy in a purple suit that I made for a short film project that I'm uh, allegedly working on. Um, so uh, I developed a scene for him oh, around about VTS 14 or so. Um, we started exploring acting and blocking, you know, thumbnailing and, and all these other things. So. Uh, working from VTS 14 forward, 15, we, we did some more thumbnailing and stuff and just started doing some blocking. Uh, now we're done with the first whack of blocking, okay? The major storytelling poses are done, you know, the big stuff. Like the things that if they're not there, the whole thing falls apart. Now we're at a position where we need to be able to figure out what do we do next? And this is often a place where a lot of ex experienced animators get into trouble. A lot of animators get into trouble, but even guys who are experienced get into this spot and they go, oh gosh, all right, now it's time for me to just kind of work my way through, you know, I hope it looks okay when I turn off step keys and goes all spliny and stuff starts slopping all over the place. It's a, it's a pretty scary place to be and uh, it's a good place for us to be this month to explore how to make it a little less scary to go through this next step, okay? This is where a lot of animators either make or break their ability to do the job. Okay, I'm not talking about their ability to animate a scene well, I'm talking about their ability to function as professionals and, um, and hit deadlines and, and make changes and, and do all the things that commercially are, you know, we never talk about these things in, in the art of animation because it's just so much of a challenge just to learn the art of it. But Ultimately, if you ever want to become a professional at this stuff, if you don't, great. But if you do, it's good to know how to survive on the job. And so this is stuff I came up with and I've learned from other animators to um, help this phase move a little faster, okay? So it's really important. I want to take our time and look at it. This month, we're going to take a look at uh, what, what, what is a breakdown? Why do we need it and why are we talking about it here? We talked about this a little bit in the past in previous VTS, but we're going to get into it a little bit more in detail, a little more specifically here. Uh, we're going to look at the history of breakdowns, where the idea started, why it was added, and um, how come we lost it. Uh, and then we're going to take a look at some examples. I even did some hand-drawn examples. Yes, yes, I drew some things. Actual animation paper with pegs and everything crazy stuff yeah so uh, we're gonna take a look at some examples both hand-drawn and uh, a little example on the computer talking about the importance of breakdowns and how it helps figure some things out and how you can use this phase of production to get yourself solid on breakdowns and then we're gonna go into the scene and start building a few breakdowns on on a few of the moves now here's the thing it's important to know that we're not going to handle all the breakdowns for this scene this month. We're going to come back to it again in VTS 19. We're going to, we're going to continue this so that the stuff sinks in. The other thing is you're going, to under, you're going to kind of be led to a position where you understand how I think about breaking a scene down into manageable chunks. Because one of the problems that we run into as animators is we see this complex mass of, of things that have to be done. And there's so much stuff to keep track of that if you don't compartmentalize it, at least from a workflow standard, not from a standard of like, you know, compartmentalizing the head only does the head things and the hand does the hand things so that you get this little stuff that doesn't play together. I'm not talking about compartmentalizing the performance. I'm talking about compartmentalizing, making little compartments of how you work through a scene, of how you construct it, okay? Just like building a house. You design a house with the whole end thing in mind. So you think of the way the rooms are laid out, and then you, after you think of the rooms, you start thinking, okay, then we put this kind of paint, maybe this kind of light, and you play around with a lot of different ideas. But when it comes time, when you finally settled on a design for a house, you don't build it that way. If you built it that way, that would be insane. 
you don't put up one wall, paint it, and put trim on it, and put electrical in it, and then go on and put up another wall, start from scratch, and then drywall it, and put electrical and plumbing and all, and paint it. You'd have two finished walls, and the rest of your house wouldn't be done. And then by the time it all got done, this wall wouldn't match that wall, this wouldn't match that, this wouldn't match that, and next thing you know, it looks like a mess. This is how we animate. This, this is how computer animators animate. When we first start out, this is how we do it. If I'm not telling you the truth, then you are a strange bird, and I've never met you. But every other animator I've ever met who works in CG starts off doing things this way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to complete this little piece right here. You know, so we'll spend a lot of time finicking over the arm motion. You know, we'll get the arm motion where, oh, you know, just we'll spend a day on arcs for the arms. Oh, wow, that's great. And then we make, a, we make a preview and we're like, Oh my gosh, well, everything else is falling apart. And then you start chasing, you start chasing your tail. Okay? You don't build a house one wall at a time, A to Z. You frame in the whole thing. Then you drywall the thing. And then you electrical thing. And then you do the plumbing. And then you do the trim. And then you do the fixtures. And then you do the painting. And then there's a process to it. You compartmentalize the workflow. So that way, that's what we're going to do. Um, this is the beginning, or actually I should say, this is an extension of the compartmentalization of workflow that I've been talking about. Yes, we're talking about the important things of, yeah, the, hey, how do we perform a scene and it's important, but I also want to teach you guys how to animate. Because there's no shortage of people who tell you what good animation is. I mean, there's lots of resources for that. But there, are, there aren't many resources of people saying, hey, listen, here's a scene. How do you get it done? And so that's what we're going to look at this month. So stick with me. We'll have some fun, maybe. Hee! How do you like the blue shirt? Hmm? It's good on me. Okay. What in the world's a breakdown? That's a mental breakdown. That's not what we're talking about. That's a dance breakdown. Well, allegedly. We're not talking about that either. A breakdown. A breakdown drawing in animation. Well, what is this strange beast? Where did it come from? Who invented this word? Break down. What is it breaking? And why is it breaking it down? Why not break up? Why not break up like a, like a Hollywood couple? Break up. No. Anyways, the idea here is what do we do? What's this whole thing about breakdowns? Where did it start? Where does it go? Why did they do this? Do we do this? Should we do this? Is this something we ought to do? Let's go find out. First thing, let's have a conversation about where did the breakdown begin? Back in the early days of animation, animators um, generally didn't draw every frame. Okay, well, I mean, they did very early on, but uh, Disney implemented a system of key animators and uh, in-betweeners, and between those would be assistants. Okay, so your hierarchy of animation would be your key animator who would draw your key poses and uh, define the acting and the performance and everything like that. The assistant would work off of those drawings and come up with the in-betweens. Okay, so what you had then was the, you needed to tell the assistant what to do. Now let's take a look at this little example I've got here. I've got just a little, I don't know, something. That's a ball on two sticks that could represent a hand and an arm. So there's one position and there's the other position. Okay? Front, dump, dump. Start, end. Now, the problem is that you would get this poor little Maybe he wouldn't be a little guy, but you'd get this you'd get this poor assistant who would get this scene from the animator, and if all he got were these two these two drawings, he really wouldn't know exactly how he wanted to get there. So he would just assume that he wanted to go straight across the animator. Because there's nothing to help him. If there was nothing in between these drawings, then the in betweener, the assistant, would have to say, okay, well, if, if the animator hasn't given me any more information, I'll just use these two points of data and I'll draw all the drawings in between. And so what you had then was the in-betweener would draw what he thought would work. Okay? So that's pretty much just a, about a straight line. Okay? Um, my 2D animation skills aren't that great, but you kind of get the sense 
that there's a little bit of an arc there, but it's not much. Okay, so if we play that, you see that it. Well, first off, we have to go ahead and loop it. I'm such a dummy. Uh, loop, hooray! You see, it just kind of goes straight down. Okay, and that's what the that's what the in betweener would do. He would say, "Well, I've I've got to I've got to draw these things, and this is on twos, so you know it would it would hold." For this move, these these frames would be held for two frames each, and and that's what the that's what the in betweener would do because it was a waste of time to have the key animator draw all these drawings where no new performance is being defined. All you're doing is getting from A to B, so the animator would say A to B, and if there was and they'd give them timing charts to tell them how to how to shift this stuff for waiting, but we're not going to talk about that right now. Right now, we're just trying to understand the concept of the breakdown drawing. In this one, five would be the breakdown drawing, okay? Ding, ding, halfway in between one and nine would not be three, it would be five, okay? One, nine, and the breakdown would be five. This drawing right here would, if given by the animator, if the animator gave the assistant one, five, five, and nine, then the assistant could draw three, and seven with confidence because all he has to do then is figure out how to get from one to five and that's just drawing this one so the assistant would draw that and then how to get from five to nine so the assistant would draw that now if the timing chart called for more frames in between the animator wouldn't need to give him anything more than five and nine and if there was, instead of just one drawing in between, say if there was three or four drawings in between, the assistant would still have enough information to know what to do. Okay? Now this is a neat little historical lesson, but it's, it's important for us to grasp the concept behind why in-between drawings were, were invented. It was to tell the assistant how to draw things in between two major poses. Okay, because the assistant can't read the animator's mind, the animator had to create a drawing to define it. Now, the thing about it is that you can go any number of ways with this. This is not the only way to define the in-betweens on this. So let's take a look at another example of a way you can do it and show how much it could be different. Let's look at this, this example. This example? Let's make my tongue is swollen to fill my entire mouth. Uh, this example, where we have the same beginning and end drawings, it's the same drawings, okay, but now the animator says, Mr. Assistant, I want you to use this as my breakdown. Now that's very different than what we had before. Now he's bringing the hand up over the top, okay, so if we go ahead and we loop this and we watch it, That's a very different kind of motion. It's a very different way of handling the scene. It's, it's just as valid, and it has the same beginning and end points. Now, if you're the assistant, and you didn't have this breakdown drawing to help you, you wouldn't know how to make it look like that. You wouldn't know how to draw three or seven, or if necessary, anything else. So this, just by changing the breakdown drawing, you get a completely different kind of move, motion, motion, movement, something. You get something different. I know it's different. It's, it's probably even different than fried chicken. All the same, what you have here is a very different approach to this because the animator has told the assistant, I want this kind of a, a motion instead. And fairly basic stuff, but remember the purpose of the breakdown. This is going to come back import and be important later, so write it down in your little notebooks. The purpose of a breakdown is to tell your assistant, your in-betweener, how to make the move from A to B. Okay? You're thinking, I don't have an assistant. Oh yes you do, you just don't know it yet. Alright, let's take a look at a third way of looking at this. This one has, uh, it's the same beginning and end drawings. They all have the same beginning and end drawings. Okay? But this one we use a little bit of a delay and some arc to it, okay? So if we watch this one looping, it's a slightly different move than the first one. And it helps to find the arc a little bit better and there's some other things going on. But you, you're starting to see that if you draw your breakdown a certain way, if you draw your breakdown a certain way, sorry that wasn't the breakdown, this was, 
you can really change and start to define how things move. It's really the breakdowns, if I can be so bold, the breakdowns add the character to the motion. Okay? The key poses define the character of the performance of the emotion. Okay? Those key drawings reflect the emotion in, in a very strong way. The breakdowns define the character of the motion. And it, it helps me to think in that term. So I when I come to when I when I come to a, a scene and I'm thinking, oh gosh, you know, that that he just doesn't feel he doesn't feel like he's really he's really sad here or he doesn't feel like he's really into it or whatever he's supposed to be feeling if I'm not getting that sense of feeling out of the character it helps me to think okay well let's what's defines that okay that's the key poses so then I go and I work on the key poses to try and make them stronger or clearer or easier to read okay but let's say I'm thinking, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he seems okay here, but there's something about the motion seems kind of flat. You know, it's kind of flat and it's uninteresting. It's not very fun to watch. It's not, it's not entertaining. Well, then I can go ahead and say, well, that's that's my breakdowns. My breakdowns need some work. I need to I need to punch those up a little bit. Uh, or I could say, you know, the motion feels even, or he feels weightless, or he feels, uh, you know, I like I like the performance but I just don't like the motion well that's a breakdown issue okay so that that helps me to figure out what to work on and what not to work on so to further drive this point home let's take a look at some comparisons this is where we compare the first one where it's just straight through and the second one where he brought the arm over if we watch this you see it's a comp you should be able to play it you see that there's two different kinds of two different kinds of motion it, just to illustrate the difference and and again to try and drive home the point that the in-betweener the assistant needs to know what you want to do these are very different drawings they both occur at the same time and they define what the in-betweeners job is see how that's very different those three drawings again you do have an assistant you just don't know it yet and if we look at a comparison between the first and the third one we'll see that there's slightly more arc on the one and that's that's a very that's a very fine thing now the reason why I show this is because this in traditional animation is how you solve problems you don't have F curves you don't have the ability to just go in there and just take a channel and move it and drop things over when it comes to hand-drawn animation which is what most animation has been for oh, going on a century now you have your key drawings, you have your breakdowns, okay, and you have your in-betweens, but everything's drawn. Somebody has to make this stuff, okay? So, if you have a problem with your arc and you are a hand-drawn animator, you do not have any little magical widget to go grab and pull around hoping you can find it, okay? This is a this is an important thing for me to to stress. The reason why I started working more traditionally in the way I think is because I realized I don't know what I'm doing, okay? I didn't know how to solve problems. I would just go in and grab curves and start pulling stuff around until I got something I liked. Does that sound familiar? Hmm, maybe it sounds like you. I don't know. Maybe maybe this isn't something you struggle with, but I know I struggled with it for years. Gosh, how do I? Okay, I'm tired of having to go and reinvent the wheel every time I need to fix something. So, how do I fix it? So I studied traditional animation. I started on the computer, but I went back and studied traditional and figured out, oh, that's how they fix it. And once I learned that, I've been increasingly moving towards that direction in in my work for a long, long time. So, that's the that's a that's a key distinction because this this image right here, this one, look at it. It looks so glorious. But that right there is the difference between being an animator and being a very talented discoverer of happy accidents. Okay? I'll repeat that. That one picture is the, it defines the difference between being a real animator, somebody who knows what they're doing and how to animate, and being someone who is a talented, happy disco discoverer of happy accidents. How much of our animation on the computer? is just putting something up there, tweaking some curves, moving some things around on different frames and saying, oh wow, that looks pretty good, I'll keep it. 
I, I'm being honest here. The first five years of my animation, that was in, that was all I did, was I would put something up and I would say, oh, that doesn't look good. Here, let me mess around with this. And I'd go grab some magical little widget, some curve or something, or I'd go to, I'd scrub in the timeline. Like, oh, okay, well, let me let me take and pull this thing over here, and the computer would magically remember it. And then I would watch it and I'd be like, oh no, that's not working. So let me, let me go over here and tweak this. Let me tweak that. Okay first five years of animation for me was I was a talented, meaning I knew what looked good and what didn't, discoverer, meaning I didn't tell it what to do so much as I did something and said, oh, I guess that works, of happy accidents. I want to teach us to be animators. An animator knows how to change things, the difference between those two drawings. Okay, I'm done ranting on that. Let's move into the computer and see how this applies. Okay, so here we are. Today I'm using Maya because that's what I am used to using and I own it and I like it and it works for me. You may use something different. Maybe you use Messiah or Lightwave or maybe you use XSI or 3D Studio Max or Cinnamon 4D or Blender. Maybe you don't use Maya. It doesn't really matter. Whatever you use, introduce yourself to it because that's your assistant. Hi, Maya. Would you like to be my assistant today? Yes, Keith, that would be lovely. Let's get to work. Okay, Maya, let's get to work. What would you like me to do today, Keith? Oh, how about doing some in-betweens for me? Oh, that would be lovely. I have some wonderful in-between ideas. Oh, I don't know, Maya. That might be a little bit too much for you at this point. Oh, come on. I'm smart and I'm used in all kinds of films. True, but you're not very smart. Aw. That hurts, Keith. Okay, I'm done being puppeteer with my window. That's kind of fun. This is your in-betweener, though. Maya is your in-betweener, or whatever you use. Let's go ahead and take a look at our controls. This is a little IK chain arm. We have one drawing, two drawings. Okay, let's zoom back out a little bit just to prove it's 3D. Ooh, one drawing and two drawings. Okay, much like our hand-drawn one. Now, here's what your dumb in-betweener, your dumb assistant, thinks it should do. Blah, 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 blah. Straight through. Now this is FK, so you're going to get a little arc for free, but still, not a lot of interest there. Okay? Pretty even, pretty dull, pretty... Blah, 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 blah. Okay? The problem, the reason why in-betweens were started, remember, I said, was to let the animator tell the assistant how to do things from point A to point B. Okay? Where are we with our scene with our Murray guy? Okay, let's take a look at where we are with our scene. Right now, this is where we are. There are no in-betweens because we haven't invited the computer to make any of them yet. The problem becomes when we move this out, we say, okay, computer, we think you're smart enough to fill in the in-betweens now. And then we hit play and the computer just does blah. Okay, that is a problem. You see all these frames right here? This is the wonder and the curse of the CG technology. Before 19, oh, 1985 or so, each one of these represented somebody sitting down and drawing them out. That person usually had life goals and dreams and hopes, and they usually wanted to be paid usually ate food, breathed air, and occasionally went to the bathroom and bathed. Okay? Meaning, you got nothing for free. In the computer age, we get all this stuff for free, and we think, oh, look at you, free drawings, yay! And this is where we get in trouble, because now we've lost our discipline. We've gotten flabby. In the pre-computer days, you didn't have people drawing drawings for you just to draw drawings. You had to tell them how to draw them because those people were expensive. So if you wanted to get from here to here in a way that was anything other than dull, you needed to make a breakdown drawing. And that's what we're going to do here too. Look, I'm going to make a breakdown drawing. It's going to be something different. All right. So from here to here to here. It's different now. It's more interesting. It's something, okay? But again, oops, sorry, didn't mean to bump the mic there. Again, we just have lots of free drawings and we get sloppy. Now, I just did that on the fly while looking at this stuff. What's the difference between doing it in a CG that way and doing it the other way? Where are we at with my scene with Murray? 
we're pretty much at this stage right here, right? No in-betweens. That's because I don't want the computer to tell me what to do, and I don't want I don't want to be borrowing from the computer. It's dumb, lazy ideas. So if I want to do some fun things, I will make my own. Okay. This is how I do it. Okay, I did that too fast. I'm very sorry. I'll do that again. Right now, all the poses are stacked. Okay, we call I call that stacked. They're all up in the side. There are no in betweens. These are just drawings. Now I want to make an in between. Well, the computer is good for some things. It does let us get some things for free that we can then use the way we want. So what I do is I take the second drawing and I move it over. Okay. Now if the computer is set to linear interpolation, it's going to give me the halfway point for free. Okay. That will look exactly the same if I take this and move it back out to the 9 where it was before. And if I go here to 5, you notice it didn't change because that's the halfway point. So if I take this and I move it back to 3, and then I come back here to, oops, stop it, and I come back here to 2, that's the halfway point. Notice, 1 frame, 2 frames halfway, 3 frames, the other point. A, B, with 1 in the middle. There's your breakdown. That's the breakdown that the computer thinks you should have. I think the computer's not very smart, at least in this regard. So here is when I go ahead and I create the kind of breakdowns that I want. So now I got this, this, and this. Three drawings. What will that give me? Exactly the same thing that I would have done that I did earlier when I did it by hand on number five. Okay? So now, if we go through it, you get the same thing. Okay? Well, you say, why not use all those free frames? Because they get us soft and lazy. Okay? Let's say if we get rid of all these. And we say, oh gosh, you know, and if we're not disciplined, well, I, I think the arm should be up more. Let's let's do that one. Okay, that's good. Oh, that's that's not working. Well, that, that's whatever. Let's let's that's really weird. Let me let me let me change let me change that a little bit. Okay, okay, that's but there that's funky right there. See how that's funky? That's that's weird. Let me let me try let me try this. Okay, all right, it's 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 a little it's a little better. Well, but okay. Um, all right, but there's something going on with the hand right, right there. So let me let me fix that, okay? And now I see it's it's still coming in. Well, all right, I guess I guess that'll do. But wait, that's that's too much. Let's 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 do let's all right. Let's do that. All right, there. Now let's go ahead and select all those. Look inside of our dope sheet and just focus on this area right there and. It's it's kind of a mess. Um, it's it's like, could you look at that and tell which one was the breakdown drawing? You you can't because there isn't one. That's why. Yes, that's what we do in CG animation, and we wonder why stuff we chase our tails and it doesn't look good. It's because we don't know what we're doing. Okay, maybe we do. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh. Maybe I'm being too opinionated. But and and the way I look at it is, I need to know how to animate not know how to manipulate a machine. And so knowing how to animate means knowing how to make breakdown drawings at work. And you notice that things are simpler here. Okay, we look at our dope sheet again. One, two, three. Easy. The computer is only given one, two, three frames to work with. And if you want, you can even make those breakdowns breakdowns. And that's when you start getting into the ease of compartmentalizing. Remember I said that before? We compartmentalize our work. You don't try and do all this uh, complex stuff on the fly. You break it down into pieces. But let's go back to the one where I had kind of just muggled everything in there. And you say, well, gosh, that looks pretty good. Sure, sure, no problem. I'm sure maybe it does. Okay. Now all of a sudden, you show this to your director, and he says, "No, I, I, I really don't. I really don't want the hand to go like that. I want it to. I want it. To, I want it to kind of come over the top even more." Oh, okay. Uh, go over the top. Okay, which key is that for? Let's see. That's. Let's see. This one right here. Okay, so we'll go there, and I guess we'll do this over the over the top. Okay, we'll do it over the top. All right, and then. Oh, but that's that's. Oh man, now I got to fix that. Um. All right, and then let me let me do this one. All right, well then we could we could do that, but oh, see that's 
All right, and then and then this one right here. Let's let's go ahead and, and do that. And but we want like that. And then, but wait. Um, okay, that's that's not looking too good. All right, it's a lot harder to fix. Okay, so then what we say is, well, I may, maybe I just need I'll, I'll go I'll go look at the curves in the graph editor. So then we go, and we grab the magic widgets, and we think, okay, well maybe if I maybe if I tweak the magic widgets, and then we say, let's make the magic widgets look good. Oh well, see this. Oh, see that's that's why it's, it's sloping off too much. Oh well, see this magic widget, you know that one. Okay, and then and we say, oh gosh, well you know look at that. It's all. You know it's all straight. That's that's why it's not working. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and you know oh well you know. We'll fix the magic widgets. We'll make them look pretty. If we make the magic widgets look pretty, it'll make the motion look pretty, right? So let's go ahead and do that. All right. Okay. We made the magic widgets look good. It it looks worse. What happened? It's because we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> okay. So convert compare that to the other pro the other way we went. I'll just make it again since I just undid all that stuff. Okay, so we just do this one, we do this one, and we do this one. Okay. Alright, so we have our three drawings. I show that to the director and he says, Oh gosh, you know, I want that to go over the top. Oh, okay. Go over the top, huh? Well let me see. Uh, we'll just do this. And we'll do this. And we'll do this. Okay? Alright. Like that? Yeah, kind of. It's a little funky in the way it comes down. But how much simpler was that? Instead of letting the computer push me around, instead of letting my assistant come up to my desk and saying, hey, I made a bunch of drawings for you. Can you use any of them? I'm saying, assistant, sit down and be quiet. And when I give you some work to do, then you can do it. This is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to communicate the idea that the breakdowns are your key to controlling the the box instead of pushing a machine around you're animating okay now that's that's funky but it's a lot easier to fix than just messing around with a bunch of different things and we don't have to worry about graph editors and all that other stuff and even that probably is just leftovers simpler easier probably ends up being cleaner and looking better anyways so that's the the point to going breakdown drawings now the other reason why I'm not going to get away from you know, I'm not, I'm not going to even ask the computer for all these things I'm just showing them to you to kinda you know talk in in the realm that we experience you'll see when I go over to the scene with Murray I don't even bother with that stuff I'm still right here everything's stacked I'm just trying to see how it goes from one to the other to the other breakdown second pose First pose, second pose. Okay? Dink, 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 dink. Simple. Alright? So, of course, there's some extra junk here, but don't worry about that. That's the loveliness of the computer. Alright, so you may say to yourself, gee, well, that's. You're not really showing me anything that's super great and simple. I mean, it's not like the other system was really that complicated. I mean, you could, you could mess with it, sure. And if all your scenes and animation were this simple, then anybody could do it. That all sounds well and good, but let's assume that you're not going to animate simple things all your life. Let's say we have a little more complex thing. You're going to have this storytelling pose into this storytelling pose. Now, if you just let the computer fill that in, you're going to be in for a world of trouble. If we move this on out here, let's say we take that oh, half a second for that to happen. Eh not much going on there and then you could say well you know maybe I oh okay but it's all just linear okay the computer is not gonna do anything smart for you it's just gonna it's gonna blah, 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 from one or the other now the good thing is if your storytelling poses are solid you can almost get away with this I mean you really can't get away with it but it's got good foundation if you were to give this to your in-betweener you know you would get okay stuff back but that's not what we're gonna do here that's not what we're gonna do here remember we like to work one drawing at a time so picking up on our concept here I wanna break this thing down I wanna make that more interesting I wanna drag some things I wanna I wanna really give some flavor to this I wanna have a, a sense of just like a, 
a, a moment in between, okay? Just from an acting standpoint, he's coming back from just getting knocked down by somebody who probably doesn't, he didn't expect to get knocked down by, and then he's just kind of looking at it, or something. I mean, you could you can make up any number of things, but those are two distinct um, emotional beats and poses. I mean, it's it's all it's all pretty solid. So, how would I go ahead and start adding breakdowns here? I'm going to use this as an example instead of using my Murray scene this month because uh, that one's really complex and, and it starts kind of getting away from the simple concept of of the breakdown stuff. Okay, I want to I really want to get the idea across about the importance and the function and, and the nature of breakdowns, so that when I start building them out in that scene, you're not going, well, what's he? Ta why is he? Why did he? Huh? I really want to explain all the huhs now. So, here's what I would do. I just want to break down. So, I ask my stupid in-betweener, my dumb assistant, Maya. I ask it, hey, Maya, can you draw me one cheap frame? Oh, sure, I can draw you one. Okay, thanks, Maya. All right, so there. That's the one I drew. That's the other one I drew. Okay? I only asked Maya to give me one. How did I do that? Well, let's go back and I'll show you really really simple. We'll just go ahead and take our dope sheet and you take all that and you move it over. Simple? Okay. Now you have this one frame here that you see this blank. The green means I did it because I told it to do it. The orange means Maya's doing it based off of what Maya thinks will work is fantastic. And you know your program may not be called Maya but it will do the same thing. But this just really isn't that terribly interesting. It's just there's not much going on there. So what I want to do is I want to start, oops, I want to start building in some overlaps. Let me see. Go back here. Grab some of these spine things. I want to give a sense of shrugging to the shoulders like he just can't believe it. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and I want to take the neck and I want to have it kind of crunch down into things and take the head and have it crunch down into things okay I'll take the jaw and we'll bring that back up to where it's sort of naturalish okay we'll fix the lips later don't worry about that So now there's a little more zip to it when he comes up. I haven't done anything with the arms yet. So what I want to do with the arms is uh, really give us some accent to when they come back in. So all I'm doing is I'm doing like a, a traditional animator would do. I'm kind of drawing my middle, my breakdown drawing, and I'm using my other drawings as a way of helping me explore that. Okay. Yeah, we'll take this. We'll fix this one. All right, there. I didn't like that drawing. There. So here, we'll just explore a few things. And just mess around with a few things here. You'll excuse me as I make this up on the fly. So what I'm doing here is I'm helping my dumb assistant know what it is I want it to do. Oops. So dumb assistant can make better choices about how to do things. And this, remember I said, breakdowns define the flavor of the motion? Well, what I'm doing here is I'm really defining a very different kind of motion for how the computer gets from A to B. And it actually adds to the E-motion. Alright, so let's go ahead and mess with our eyes a little bit. Um, we'll just do it pretty quick here. And we'll go ahead and take the yeah, lids and let's just do that and that ok 
okay and uh, just change some things here I'm, I'm messing with the attribute channels that are off the screen here so if you're wondering how is this stuff magically moving it's just because I'm going ahead and magically moving some things let's go ahead and crunch up his nose too while we're at it that's the beauty of computer animation is you can move stuff around and up do and well well let's just take all this stuff back to zero sometimes it's just easier to start back at zero sometimes a computer gives you stuff that's just hard to work with so all right take that bottom lip down a little bit so bottom lip down a bit upper lip up a bit and okay let's mess with our corners So we're starting to get somewhere here. I select all that there. Now I've got, well, let me go ahead and select something. Now I've got something very different. Okay, let me take all these controls just to show you what I'm doing here. All right, this is how I work. This is just animating. Now, I got five things in my head and I'm trying to say them all at once. You'll, you'll pardon me for that. Let me take all these keys, put them over here for now, and delete these. This is what the computer thought should be an in-between. Eh, okay, I guess, just because, and the only reason why it's okay is because these two poses are good. But that's just, yeah. you know, that compared to that. Oh, one's got far more emotion to it. That and that. I mean, one one's got some life the other one just kinda this just kinda meh. and my dumb in-betweener thought this was a good idea and that brings me to the the question that I had um, a lot from folks I remember last month I asked for questions well some of you did thanks a bunch a lot of you asked okay Keith one of the questions I have is when do you start spreading these poses out into the timeline and start working with what the computer gives you and my answer to them privately was I do that as late as possible. Um, if we were to just take this and, and move it out there, we've already looked at it. It's it's pretty. Mm, there's not enough information here. Basically, our poor in betweener is stuck, not knowing what to do. So it just draws everything linearly from point A to point B. Now you could, I suppose, go in here and start messing with all these magic widgets, but they're really hard to understand. They're a pain in the butt. It's difficult to see what they're all about. So what we need is more information in order to help define the motion so that's what this that's what this thing is this is our breakdown and that breakdown helps us define the motion so I bring that back over here and already we got something that's a little bit better and we got what three drawings and the computer is just got a couple of things to work with now the timing is still all all pants. I mean, it's just no good yet because we still need more information, and that's what we're going to get into next month. Is when we start talking about even more breakdown drawings. Yes, you can have more than one. There may be a primary one, and there may be other ones. But there comes a point where you got to start giving the computer more information, or else you're going to get just stuff that doesn't. You know, you're going to get stuff that if you don't give it information it looks like that if you do give it information it starts doing a better job of filling in the blanks for you and that's really all you're asking this in-betweener to do is you're asking it to fill in the blanks so that you don't have to do and craft this every single frame All right. one of the things is that gives us our buttery smooth nice looking CG animation look because the computer does this stuff mathematically so it has a mathematical function to it but too mathematical and what you get is blah, 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 a big pile of pudding 
We don't want pudding. We want stuff that's got some life to it. So the answer to that question is I try to delay sliding things out in the timeline or another way of thinking of it, I try not to ask my in-betweener to give me drawings before I'm ready for them. Okay? If you think like a traditional animator and you think that whenever I move this stuff away from next to each other, okay, when these drawings are next to each other, the computer has no say as to what anything in between should look like. When I start making space in between them, I start inviting my in-betweener to give me drawings. Okay? If you think of it like that, it might help you better understand when you're ready to ask your in-betweener to give you more drawings. Right now, it's not the time. Many, 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 even professional feature film computer animators have problems with this stage when things only have one, two, three. See what they have, if all this stuff where if we set our tangents to stepped, here's here's the here's the classic problem. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna show this. All right, that's a little fast, so let me let me spread this out a little bit. I take that to to dailies, and I show that to the director, and the director says, "Gosh, you know that's that's really that's really good. I like that. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and run with that, and everything's in stepped." And you're thinking. Oh, cool. Everything's in stepped. It should work fine. And then they think, I've got enough information here. Director likes it. It's got a breakdown. It's got two good strong poses. So why don't we go ahead and turn everything over to spline. All right, tangents, spline. And then we get stuff that's mushy. And we think, oh gosh, here we go. I've lost the life. I've lost the energy. Now this is where I got to start messing with things. And this is where we go back to being Captain CG animator. Where we start grabbing things and saying, well, I want that to delay. And let me see. Oh, I want that to be down a little bit. And then, okay. And then I want this to be, oh, like so. And then we start getting into uh, stuff starts getting weird and and it starts just getting out of hand. Why? Because we we ask the computer for its opinion too soon. Now, if you're not confident as an animator, you're going to do that. You're going to say, I don't know what to put here. And you're going to take what the computer gives you and you're going to discover through experience what works and what doesn't. That is why you couldn't you can't do that stuff in hand drawn animation that's why it took 5 years for a person generally on average it took 5 years as an as an as an assistant learning this stuff before they ever let them become an animator very rarely was anybody promoted to animator straight out of school very very few people were like that um, even the greats today started off as assistants they didn't stay assistants very long but they started off that way glenn keane andreas deja james baxter all these guys that are the modern day greats, these guys started off as assistants. Like I said, they weren't there very long, maybe a year or two at the most, but everybody had to learn how to make stuff work. Today we just throw people in and say, there you go, use the box. And a lot of us are wallowing in that. And so what I want to try and do is help us regain confidence in being animators and regain the the brilliance of, of the the technique of using good breakdowns to really define our motion. So we're gonna we're gonna save this scene and we're gonna we're gonna use it again next month and I'm gonna show you about how to use more breakdowns, okay? To help define and fill out the information. So I don't want to take this guy out. He's not ready yet to start splining out. Okay? He's not ready yet to ask the computer, I'm moving all these keys back together. Okay? It's not ready yet to be in between. There still needs to be more information given to the in betweener before it can do a good job of giving me in betweens that I can work with and then polish and clean up. And here's the thing oh gosh, I could go on for 10 minutes on this and I'm running out of time. Probably half an hour. The thing that everybody wants to know today is how do I polish my animation so it looks great? The best way to polish your animation so it looks great 
is to work on your poses and your breakdowns and all those drawings so that they look great and give enough of them so that the computer has enough information to work with. Then it can give you information that is easy to polish. Easy to polish. When we had the mushy way before, it was difficult to know, gosh, how do I make this look good? And you're going to spend days polishing it. If you give it more information, you'll spend hours polishing it instead of days because you can't let me give you this simple analogy. If somebody gives you a small paintbrush that's one inch wide and tells you to start painting a wall with it, it's going to take you longer than if somebody gives you a roller that's 14 inches wide and can pick up a ton of paint and says, here, paint the wall. Is it because the roller is better than the brush? No, it's just it's more appropriate at that time you use the one inch brush when you start filling in the little details around the molding. What I'm trying to teach us to do is put away the one inch brush and stick with the roller a little bit longer because we're not ready to start grabbing those one inch brushes for details. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. I gotta stop. We're gonna run long. This will be a two hour video and I'm gonna keep going. All right, lots of information there. It's too much. Just go back. That's the beauty of owning these videos. That's why I make them quick time and not, like I can put flash streaming downloads on my site so that you have to keep coming back and logging in to watch it. That's cool, but I'd rather have you have the ability to take it and frame through it in quick time and step and go back and rewatch it again and whenever you want to and not have to be logged onto the internet. Put it on your little iPod if you want. Hey, why not? So that way you can you can come back to it because this is a lot of stuff. This is a lot of stuff, and and some of it, you, I'm, if this is new to you, it's not going to stick the first time. The first time you do this, you're going to be like, I don't know what he's talking about. Mother help me. But you'll do some do some practice exercises like I did, and you'll understand it a little bit more. And all animations like that. All animation is a, is a acquisition is is a knowledge of acquisition through experience. Okay, I have emails from people saying, gosh, you know, I just started animating, and how come I don't know how to time things? I don't know. That's like me writing up a guy who's a professional skateboarder and saying, gee, I just started skateboarding last week. How come I keep falling down? It's an experience thing. Well, the trick is to just keep getting on the skateboard and falling down. Well, falling down less, eventually. I would never get on one of those things. They look dangerous. Too many, too many videos on E-bombs world. Crazy things those kids do with these boards with wheels. Anyways, it's a, it, animation is a knowledge of acquisition through experience. So if you're a little frustrated or if this stuff's a little crazy or it's a little like, oh my gosh, what in the world are you talking about? It's okay. It's okay. Step back. Watch it again. Or do some work. Come back a couple of months later. Dig this video out and say, that was the one where Keith's wearing that snazzy blue shirt. Uh, he was talking about coming back to it. So I'm going to go back to it. Maybe five, six months later. And you'll watch it and you're going, bing, like little light bulbs will go off. You'll have these like, oh, I get it now. And the next thing you know, you'll be like one step farther. And it's pretty cool. Anyhow, that's enough of me rambling. Thanks so much for your time this month, guys uh, and gals. There's lots of gals. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you learned something out of it. I hope you get a kick out of being involved in the VTS. I get a kick out of doing it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, next month, VTS 19, we pick up where we left off here. There's more to breakdowns than meets the eye. Well, not too much more, but there is more. Okay, We're going to go to the next step in our compartmentalization. The next step is find out. Till then, God bless and be good.